Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Larry Balon. I am a uh, system engineer at Intuity, and I'll be your host for the next 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, welcome to Intuity's April Tech Talk session, um, which is going to cover um, the Intuity um, BMC um, TrueSight Presentation Manager dashboard integration. Uh, Tech Talks, as most of you know, are designed for our customers and technical members of our partner community. Uh, these sessions are recorded and are available on demand from the Intuity YouTube Center. They are a good resource for learning about more about the product or reviewing features that you may be interested in implementing in your environment. Uh, just a few housekeeping uh, items before we get into today, today's content. Uh, the call is placed, has been placed on mute mode um, to eliminate any outside noise. Feel free to ask questions uh, via the chat panel at any time during the presentation. We'll have time at the end to take those questions um, and answer them. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's get started. I'll advance to the next slide here. Um, so uh, today's Tech Talk, um, we will be using Intuity 16.5 um, um, patch 3. Um, this is what is required for the dashboard integration. Um, uh, the uh, the functionality for the dashboard integration was added in a patch release um, and is not available in the standard uh, distribution. So you have to patch your system to um, a minimum level of patch 03 in order to gain the benefit of the dashboard integration. And then we'll, I'm going to go right into the demonstration. So I'm going to um, share out my desktop. And what you're going to see here is I've already um, logged in into the presentation server. Um, I focused on the, uh, the uh, event um, portion of that. Um, just uh, um, before we get into the actual dashboard integrations and demonstration, I just want to talk a little bit about our existing um, our existing integration, um, which is um, the forwarding of events and Intuity incidents to TrueSight. Um, these incidents um, and events will be displayed within the TrueSight Presentation Manager console, um, and there are drill downs um, directly from the from here. If I select the object, um, you'll see that. Uh, the 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 uh, first integration that we did with the events will uh, actually cross launch back into um, the Intuity um, UI. Uh, the dashboard integration is uh, much more integrated and allows you uh, with many more drill down capabilities than uh, just cross launching into the Intuity interface. In fact, the goal of the dashboard integration was to provide you the ability. Um, to do much of your work within the TrueSight interface. Um, so basically, to install the dashboards, there's an administration um, section of the interface, um, and there's a component section here. Um, there is one zip file um, that needs to be copied to the presentation server and installed via the command line. Um, once that's done, um, you can add um, the Intuity component. I've already added my Intuity server here, um, but to add it, add the Intuity server through the web UI. Once the uh, once the dashboards uh, have been dashboard files have been installed into the system, it's simply a matter of coming up here into the UI, uh, adding the component from the pull down menu. Select the component type named Intuity Network Monitoring and then place the host name or IP address of the Intuity server um, into the box. If you're running in an environment, which is a multi-server environment, um, then what you want to put into the host name and IP address field is the uh, host name or IP address of the consolidation server. Uh, that way you can, um, you'll be able to see your entire network environment uh, when you get into uh, the network specific dashboards. So what this does is it installs a set of network related dashboards um, and that is uh, those dashboards are available here uh, on the left side through this network section. 
there are three different dashboards that are installed as part of this integration. Uh, there's a services dashboard, uh, a devices dashboard, and a top-end dashboard. And I'll go through each one of these individually. Uh, so the services dashboard, if I bring this up, this will basically log into the Intuity server and bring back any of the configured services that I've configured on the Intuity server. Uh, services basically consist of objects, um, usually um, ports um, and devices that comprise a service, and then you can apply logical operators to those. So I've created uh, four different services on my Intuity server, and they've been brought back in here. Um, this gives me a high-level overview. Um, the status just indicates all of these services are, are operating normally. I have one that's uh, for internet routers, one that's just monitoring my internet links. Uh, there's one that's monitoring um, an office I have in Sacramento, and then I have another service that's monitoring my data center load balancers. I'm just gonna select the internet routers link. This is gonna drill down, um, and it's gonna pull that information um, directly from the Intuity server, and it's gonna provide um, some gauges here. This gives me my availability. Um, unavailability and whether that service was unknown or degraded. Um, and it also uh, will provide me information in a, in a tabular format down below as to how that service is configured. So I basically have two Cisco routers and two serial ports that go out to my internet. All of these objects need to be running um, and up and operational. And you can see here that my service type is AND. Uh, this is basically the same interface that you're going to get with the exception of some graphs. Um, the, the, the gauges uh, for the service are, are shown here. If I were to log into uh, the Intuity server, you would see basically the same type of output with the exception of the, the, uh, the graphs. If I want to drill down on the graphs, I can simply click here and that will bring um, the chart data directly into the TrueSight presentation uh, manager's interface. I had a slight outage of my Intuity server this morning. That's why there is a gap um, that you see here. Um, there was an outage um, where I lost communication with those devices. Uh, if I want to get additional detail on either the devices or the ports, um, I have direct drill down capability right from here. So if I want to look at this particular router, I can simply click and that's gonna bring back the relevant information from the Intuity server. Um, the gauges we bring back um, are the same gauges that you would see if you were, if you were utilizing the native Intuity interface, and I have drill down capability um, for these graphs as well. This will bring, me, bring up a chart um, of my CPU utilization for this particular um, device. If I scroll down a little bit, there's also the, the port the port level um, status is also shown here. And again, I can um, a specific port and I can drill down directly um, from the presentation manager's um, interface uh, without having to log into the system. Um, and this will give me um, my port level metrics. Um, and again, if I want to um, um, bring up a graph, to look at the uh, the bit rate on this particular port, um, that will bring up the uh, the information and, and pull it directly from the Intuity server. Um, I'm going to go back to the device level. Um, in my particular lab environment, I've added some additional attributes at the device level to track um, maintenance end of life dates. I've populated this with some of the information, and you can see here that this additional information. Um, is also displayed um, within the TrueSight Presentation Manager. If I want to drill down and look at the chassis level data um, for the maintenance information, I can do that. And we can see here that I've um, the support end of life date for this particular 2821 chassis is um, the end of this year. Um, but this is information that I've added, or attributes that I've added at the server level, but they are displayed automatically within the presentation. Um, manager interface. The next dashboard um, I'll cover is the devices dashboard. Uh, 
This will bring back um, basically a high level overview of your devices. It's going to uh, focus on all of the devices and it will split them up into different categories. So um, in my environment, I'm monitoring 74 devices um, and you can see here, uh, 76 rather, 74 are okay. Uh, one has polling turned off and I have one device that's in a down state. Now, I can find that by scrolling through the entire list of devices, but in a large environment, you're probably not going to want to do that. So I can simply check the box for the down device, uncheck the box for the all devices, and that will take me directly into um, uh, the device that's down. And I can see here that we're not communicating with this, that uh, both ICMP and SNMP um, uh, polls to this device are, are not op are are not responding. I'll go back and uh, um, I'll check the all devices box. And again, um, what you're going to see here at the very top level is basic up down status of these devices um, and some information um, on device type and their polled IP address. I'm going to come down and pick on the C2821 router, uh, which is another. Um, Cisco router. And again, uh, when I pull this in, I'm pulling in information directly from the Intuity interface, and I'm getting the same key metrics I would see if I was launched into the um, native Intuity interface. I get the same port status as I did for the other device that I showed when I was in the services dashboard. Um, and this device has some QoS information associated with it. Uh, we don't pull in all the graphical information, but you can drill down um, into the policy map information um, and get some, some textual context around. Um, around. Uh, there's always the ability to cross launch back into the native Intuity interface. In the upper right hand corner of the web page, um, there, there's always a hyperlink that allows you to open up into the native Intuity interface. So if I wanted to actually look at some of the graphs associated with these policy maps, I can open this up in Intuity. It will, it will um, cross launch directly into the Intuity interface. And then I can drill down um, and look at this. And when I go into the class default, um, class map, you'll see here that I actually get um, graphical information um, for the pre and post policy bit rates. Um, that's something that's n not available within the native TrueSight interface. So much of the information um, that you need is contained in the TrueSight interface, but if you need to drill down, there's always that capability to drill down directly from the uh, the, um, the TrueSight presentation manager. Um, the last dashboard that I'm going to demonstrate is the top end dashboard. Uh, this differs a bit from the top end dashboard um, that you would see in the native Intuity interface. The top end dashboard in the native Intuity interface will only display port level information. It adds a couple of additional metrics uh, to the dashboard. So this will pull in the top end. Um, in this case, the top end is top five. Um, so it'll bring in information about faults, listeners, talkers. Um, it'll bring in information about utilization and discards. And then um, it will also bring in information about the CPU utilization, memory utilization, and the response time of the devices. And just as the top end um, graphs work um, within the native Intuity interface, if I wanted to bring up the CPU utilization for this device, there's a hyperlink directly to the device summary page, um, and it will pull in the graphs and gauges. And I can see here on this firewall device that my CPU utilization is 98%. If I just want to see the web-based chart, um, I can simply click in on the metric and it will bring in the chart data. Uh, so this one, um, I brought in the ICMP latency for this device. So that pretty much concludes today's demonstration. Um, so I'm going to um, stop sharing here, and um, we'll go through a couple of additional slides, and then we'll take some questions. 
Um, so the primary benefits of this integration are um, you now have the ability to look at performance metrics from your entire IT infrastructure. That includes the network and the server and, and storage infrastructure all available in, in, in a single console from the TrueSight presentation server. We provide extensive drill down capabilities, unlike the standard cross launch capability we had with the event integration, um, the drill down capabilities, uh, we, we allow several levels of drill down to get additional detailed information um, about your network devices or ports. Um, and then you can always add back in the Intuity Incident information, um, which was, which was uh, an integration that's been around since, uh, since 2008, um, where uh, we can integrate the event information. Um, and this helps to reduce your mean time to repair. The, the fact that we can integrate the, the network information, performance information into the TrueSight presentation dashboard really increases the efficiency of your operations um, so that you don't have to um, utilize more than one interface. Some helpful resources. So there is a, a separate uh, gu integration guide for integrating the dashboards into the TrueSight um, presentation server. Uh, this guide is part of the patch release, so when you download the patch, there's a p separate PDF file for this integration guide. Um, however, um, we will provide you uh, Dropbox links uh, to download that guide um, after today's presentation. Um, and if you're interested in the incident integration um, between TrueSight and Intuity, uh, there's a, an entire chapter dedicated to that in the Intuity 16.5 a user and systems integration guide, and that's in chapter 30. Okay, Pat, do we have any questions that have come over today? Yep, Larry, we do. We have a couple. Uh, the first one is, are there any files that need to be installed on the presentation server for the Intuity menus to be displayed? Uh, yes, there are. And let me just go back and share out my desktop real quick. Um, so the information and the procedure to actually install those files is in the TrueSight Operations Manager Dashboard Integration Guide, um, but there are um, there is a set of files um, in the Integ TrueSight directory on your Intuity server. There's one file. It's labeled Intuity.zip. Uh, this ha this file has to be copied over. Um, to the presentation server, and then uh, the, the guide will provide you details for using the command line tools um, on the presentation server to, um, to bring the, um, the, the, uh, the dashboard files into um, the presentation server. Okay. Okay, um, Larry, and then another question has come in. What credentials are used to access the Intuity server? Your sample was administrative level. We would want to restrict what Intuity views are available depending on the TrueSight user. Yeah, it has to be, um, it's going to have to be an account that has access. Um, if you want to take full advantage of the top end um, and the devices views, then it would have to be a, um, an account that has um, access to the uh, those views and those devices. It doesn't necessarily, you can create a separate account for that. It doesn't necessarily have to be the admin account. Um, the account that I did use for our presentation today was the admin account, and uh, the only reason I'm using that is because it's it's a lab environment, and it's just easier for me to set that up. But it would definitely have to be an account that has at least access to those sets of views. You don't necessarily have to provide um, access to the entire tool set through role-based um, mapping, but they would, you know, because we're, we're really pulling in um, just the performance information and we're drilling down really through the, the um, explorer portion of the um, Intuity software. Okay, thanks, Larry. And then another question came in. What are the PSOM versions that are compatible? 
Okay, we've tested, I, I, that's a good question. I think, I think we're actually, I think TSOM's actually up to 11, um, and we, we test compatibility with those versions as they're released by BMC. Um, I'm actually, uh, this demonstration that I've, uh, I've set up today is actually utilizing um, uh, 10.5. Okay, thanks, Larry. And then another question, why is an SSL connection required between the Intuity server and the presentation server? Okay, so that's something I really didn't cover in detail. So when we um, connect two servers utilizing, um, passing information with iframes, um, an SSL connection is required. Um, this is one um, gotcha that I've uh, I've seen um, when supporting some other BMC customers. So um, in this component section, if I edit this, and it actually won't let you edit it, but I can change the port number here. Um, it has to be an SSL connection um, in order to um, uh, conform to the standard to, prov to when you're passing information between the two servers. So um, it will default to port 443 when you um, when you do the add component um, from the uh, component menu, but it, it definitely has to be 443. Um, if you're running standard HTTP, uh, the connection will not work between the two servers. Okay, we'll just wrap it up. I want to thank everybody for attending today's session. Um, and a quick reminder, um, if you haven't signed up, um, we do have um, self-paced training. It's available um, via Intuity's Training Academy. Um, access is, you can simply go to our website and click the support link and then request uh, uh, create a, an Intuity Training Academy account uh, at the login banner. Um, and then to wrap up, uh, our next tech talk will be next month, uh, May 23rd on a Wednesday. And the topic will be the BMC TrueSight Intelligence Integration. This is another integration that Intuity's developed um, into um, BMC's cloud-based TrueSight Intelligence platform. If you have any additional questions or you have suggestions for future Tech Talk topics, uh, please submit those to tech.talks at intuity.com. Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending, and we hope to see you next month.